Hi, and this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments. And I am coming to you today to um, talk a little bit about heritage albums. Um, if you've ever put together a scrapbook album for a family member or a loved one um, of their heritage, you, you know that that's a unique opportunity and a beautiful experience, um, something that is wonderful to share and wonderful to keep. Um, first of all, before I start, I just wanna show you the custom spine that's on this album. So this is um, a, a feature of our Creative Memories albums. You can customize your spines. You can put, um, choose from several different fonts, sizes and, and whatnot for, um, for your message that goes on, on the, spine vertically up here. You can also add a date down here, which I did not do on this one because this album spans many decades. So um, I didn't really worry about that too much with this one. Um, this album in particular, since I've been talking a lot about my dad here lately, um, is an album that chronicles his side of the family, mostly his parents and their um, heritage as far back as we had some photos to represent them. Um, and so this is my grandfather and grandmother when they um, were newly married. Um, Charles Herbert Austin and Joanna Mae Gurney. And um, I just put their names here to represent their um, coming together, families coming together. Um, this album is tipped a little bit up so that I can try to avoid glare, um, but I'm sorry, you may have some issues with seeing some of the um, design features that are across the top here, um, because I do have the page protectors on these pages. They've been on for a number of years, so I didn't want to take them off. Um, this album starts with um, at the very beginning of their story because they both grew up in the same um, tiny little town of Cottonwood Falls, Kansas, which was known for its courthouse. So that's why there's a picture of the courthouse here on the front and the falls that are noted for that particular town. Um, and as we start to progress, I just want you to notice how um, there's not a lot of embellishing or additional um, colors or papers needed on these pages. When you scrapbook on a black page and you're using black and white photos or even color photos, the effect is that the, the uh, attention goes straight to whatever is not um, the black page. So it's, it's very easy to draw attention. You'll also notice if you've looked, if you've uh, worked with old photos, um, from years ago when, um, when they had these white borders around the photos or even prior to that, some photos will have a jaggedy edge, some photos will be just cut at kind of jaunty angles, which is um, kind of different than what we expect in our modern day era. But this is the way that photography was done back in the day and um, many, of our family members also recorded the information just right on the photo. So you'll notice in these photos, that is writing that um, my family member put in their scrapbook, but right on the photo, um, which actually was probably a good thing because um, the black paper that many of these photos were, were found on was disintegrating. So, um, you know, because the information was right on the photo, we didn't lose it, it's still there. Many of these photos also, they are not adhered to the page. They are in this album um, using clear corners. So um, in many of our, um, of our vintage photo albums that are done on black paper similar to this, um, they are put in with maybe black corners or um, brown corners or something like that. That's the same idea, but these are uh, clear plastic that will not affect the quality of the photograph that 
is holding them in. And we can take these photos in and out if we should need to, but they're not gonna fall out because I have one on each corner of each photo in this book. All right, so here we go. And this starts um, the story of my great, of my grandfather. And um, another thing to note, the reason that I don't put a lot of extra paper on these pages um, is because if you've worked with um, vintage photographs, you know that many times they were mounted in these cardboard folding um, or cardboard folders for as frames and they are glued in there. And I would suggest that if you are doing a heritage album, you don't try to remove that photograph from that, um, from that frame. You're going to do more damage than good, in my opinion. Um, so just leave them in the frame, maybe cut the, the folding part off so that you can adhere that into your book. Um, it may not be the best because it, it's not gonna be, um, super photo safe, but that photo has been glued in there for decades, if not longer. And I really feel like if you tried to remove it, you would, you would do more damage to it than just leaving it like it is. Um, and I just have adhered this to my page. So that makes my page rather heavy because this is like three layers of cardboard that are all glued together. And so I don't add to that by adding more cardstock to my pages. It would make this album just really monstrous to handle. <clears throat> Sometimes you find those folding um, frames and they have information written on them. Um, this one did not, but I went ahead and used the folded part of the frame as my journal box to write additional information about the people in the photo. <clears throat> and just little accents with paper around it. I love these tiny little photos right here. These actually only have two um, corners holding them in uh, because they're so small. They really didn't need a, a whole lot more than that. Memorabilia is important. And um, so whenever possible, try not to crop your memorabilia, put the whole thing in there if you can. Um, at least I feel like that's important. Um, if you have to crop it because it's just gigantic, then, then crop it, sure. But um, if you can avoid it, then, then do. Um, let's see. I love the old cars from back in the day and, and the, the writing that could be done on this little tiny border around the photos. This is a 12 by 12 piece of designer paper that I cut. Um, I used our custom cutting system round um, and just cut a center out of it. And then I cut it in half and used it as kind of the centerpiece on this page for, these are all cousins of my grandfather. And so um, it just added a little bit of depth to the page. And again, these are more cousins. Here's that roughly edge photo that I mentioned earlier. And here's a good example of, of something that had kind of a not so straight edge. You just never know what you're gonna find as you flip through an old photo album. But you, you see how many of these that are already mounted that are in here. There's quite a few. If you have newspaper articles that you want to include um, in your scrapbook, I would strongly urge you to go ahead and encase those newspaper articles in a PVC free plastic. Um, you can use one of our page protectors and then just seal the edges 
or um, or adhere the the edges down using some vellum um, ad adhesive. Um, it just protects that newspaper article from degrading farther than it already has. You can see the edges down here of this one are fraying. Also, if you overlap a photo, like I've overlapped this one, you'll see that this corner down here is not being held in by anything. There's no adhesive underneath it. It's just sort of free floating, but this photo is held by three corners. I didn't want to put any adhesive on top of this photo. And so to avoid that, I just didn't adhere that corner at all, but it stays just fine. So here, this is a letter that was written um, on, an, a, as you can tell, a very old piece of paper. I went ahead and put that inside of an additional sheet of plastic, PVC free plastic, just to protect it and keep it from continuing to um, degrade. My grandmother, this is my great grandmother, I beg your pardon, my grandfather's mother. She wrote this poem and it was published. And so that was kind of special. Her name was Nora. We all called her grammar. Even more framed photos, really special. She had six, there were six girls and one son in her family. And um, so she had a number of sisters and, um, and this was her father. They grew up on a farm. This was her mother. And you'll notice I continued to just do some minimal uh, designs to accent the pictures. Really, the journaling is the star of a heritage album. You want to have as many, um, as much information documented in here as you can, because these are likely people <coughs> excuse me, these are likely people that you never met and your children certainly have never met. So um, being able to tell who people are and how they relate to you is I think an important feature of a heritage album. We're getting, we're getting back here. This was 1941. Many of the collections that Creative Memories has are very well suited to a heritage album. They have soft colors and are, um, are very appropriate, I think, for working, in, uh, working with black and white photographs. Now we're getting a little bit more current, more current being 1958, 1973. So these are a little bit closer to nowadays. Flipping the page, we're going into my grandmother's um, information. This is Joanna Mae Gurney. She was my grandmother and um, she and my um, grandfather have a really interesting story about the way that they met. She actually was a soda jerk at a pharmacy counter um, in their little town. And um, she, oh, there's this is my dad. Huh? Um, she used to, this was back in the day when not, a, not everyone could afford to you know, have, have soda or anything more than lemonade in their refrigerator. And so they would um, have to go to someplace special and have the, the CO2 added to the syrup and the soda made in front of them. And so that's what my grandmother used to do. And um, my grandfather used to go in and sit at the counter and get a Coke and sit there and just to talk to her. So a Mother's Day letter, this is also in plastic because as you can see, it's really, really old paper. And so it's starting to yellow. Um, 
or it had started to yellow before I got a hold of it and was able to get it in here. My dad was born in 1943, so this was this was 1941. And there's not a date on this Mother's Day card, but he was her oldest son. So I think it's reasonable to think that's probably from him. These are my grandmother's siblings and these are her siblings later in life. If you're going to um, visit family members gravestones, uh, a lot of people like to include those in your heritage album um, because they include a lot of really great information, death dates, birth dates, etc. So um, I have a few of those and I, I love these extra um, articles and things like that that were written about our family members. And it's really nice to be able to include those in your album so that you can get to know these people who went before you. Really, really sweet. This is my grandmother's grandfather and his family. And over here, the, uh, the Bradley family, I have listed out who each one of these people are um, and when they were born and when they died so that it's easier to, to be able to tell. This is from before the turn of the night, the, the turn of the 20th century. So uh, really, really long time ago. Including census records is also a good thing um, or any kind of certification that you find with your loved one's um, name on it. It's really, really cool to add, um, add in along with their photos so you can see it. <clears throat> and this is the little church that my grandparents were married in. And a little story over here about how they were, how they met and were acquainted and, and dated. They dated for a year and a half and then they were married. Telegrams while my grandfather served in World War II. He was really good about keeping records of the way he spent his money. And so um, that's what this is, is a record that I found um, that where he had written down what an overnight trip to Wichita had cost them for their honeymoon. $7 for the minister, $3.50 for the license, $1.28 for the corsage and boutonniere, dancing cost them a dollar and 12 cents, drinks cost 70 cents. Um, the cabin they stayed in was $2 and 50 cents. Jones ring was $20. Charles ring was $5 and the tax for on everything was 50 cents. So their whole honeymoon cost $41.60. Those are the days, eh? So since my grandfather did serve in World War II, um, they, there, were, there were pieces of memorabilia that came from that era, um, such as the ration books that they used to have to, um, that we used to have to use here back home in order for there to be enough um, of supplies to go overseas to support all of the soldiers, sailors, and Marines that were fighting. And so um, I found one of those and decided that it would be worthwhile to keep that. Again, it's encased in plastic underneath the page protector so that it has its own kind of isolation from the other photographs and things, but um, to protect it as well as to protect the photos. This was an award for notorious service that he earned. Some other relatives that also served in the military. And this is the bank my grandfather worked at for a number of years, managed. Lots of love letters that came home and uh, to and from people that they loved. My grandfather is also involved in the science. The science is an arm of, um, of 
the Masons, if you're familiar with, um, with that organization. Um, and did a lot of philanthropic work. Um, this is a later picture of all of, of their two sons and their families. This is me way back in the day. Um, and some other loved ones and friends. And then this was their 50th wedding anniversary, years and years and years later. But my favorite thing is on the back right here where it says, at their 50th wedding anniversary party, Chuck and Joan offered sage advice. Beware of a nickel Coke because it can possibly get you into a 50 year commitment. Um, and the two of them would certainly know because they did celebrate over 50 years together. So um, that is um, the end of this heritage album that um, I did for my dad of his parents. And um, I hope it's helped give you some ideas for doing your own. And until next time, I hope you keep creating. Take care.